Welcome to In Edina, a program about the people, places, and activities all in the city of Edina. I'm your host, Lillian McDonald. Happy New Year, everyone. We wish you a fabulous 2008. We hope your holidays were fun, and we have a lot to look forward to in this new year. And we're going to kick off this program with some ideas to support your New Year's resolutions, which I know many of us make from time to time. And we're going to start by talking about fitness. And joining us to do that is Donna Tilsner and also Kristen Arsvold. You're both recreation supervisors in the city of Edina and you have a ton of things to talk about. There's a lot to do outside and inside. There is and thanks for having us. You know we have 39 parks, 37 parks excuse me, in our park system and they're all free right now. You can walk around. Our playground equipment is there all summer and winter. It's a great time for families to go out and enjoy the winter. You can build snowmen, go swing on the swings. You might even see some little animals, some nature outside. So we encourage people to go do that. And the parks have some paved trails in them, right? Absolutely. We have five parks where the pathways are cleared. Lake Cornelia, Lewis Park, Todd Park, Heights Park, and even at Bredesen Park we have a two-mile loop and they have some uh, cross-country skiing opportunities on their Inner Nature Trail, which is a great full body workout for folks. And walking is free. It's a great opportunity to get out. And even, even though the winter is cold, get outside. We encourage people to get outside. And they can cross-country ski as well at our Braemar Golf Course. They've got a short and long course for folks to do that. There. You know, it's just a matter of getting going, okay? Absolutely. Getting the coat on, putting the hats and the gloves on. And, but you know, when the sun is out and it's bright and it's beautiful on the trails, uh, it's really not so bad out there. Absolutely. And it's a good way to burn calories, too. It really is a good way to burn calories. And also at our parks, if you're not really a walker, but you'd like to ice skate, right now we have 12 parks that we flood. Um, we have 12 general skating rinks, 11 hockey rinks that are all outside, free to use. We're open uh, seven days a week, our warming houses. Mm -hmm. um, our maintenance crew floods and shaves them every day. We do have sometimes available that we have open hockey and then we have our general skating rink that's open all the time. Youth hockey comes and has practices and we'll be open through mid-February. That's fabulous. And you have some organized events there uh, in the evening for youth activities too, so call ahead to be sure that there's, but with 12 rinks, you're not going to have any trouble getting on, that's right, for sure. Right. Now the cross-country ski trails, if you got new skis, and I did four years ago, we're finally getting snow now to support the skis. You can hop on. They're not necessarily groomed trails, though, right? Absolutely not. They are um, a short course and a long course over at the Braemar Golf Course, and they're not they're not technically groomed, but there are there are skiers out there almost every day working out, getting active. Grooming them for you, absolutely. Yeah, and our golf courses are really nice ride too. It's out of the way, and it's easy to do when once you get going. Again. <laughs> I shouldn't say it's really easy to do because I've done it. It's not that easy, but it is a lot of fun. Let's talk about um, some of the inside activities now. Well, when you're looking at your fitness goals, we have the walking path at Edinburgh Park. Uh, we have the fitness equipment there. We've got recumbent bites, elliptical machines. We've got the indoor pool. And besides that, the gorgeous playground feature, the Adventure Peak, which is a great way to burn off energy with your kids. The Great Hall is there. So thinking about taking fitness a different route and doing it with your entire family. Well, when the winter blues start coming on a little bit, you want to get those children out and get them active too. And it's a nice trade-off. I mean, you can be outside then inside, especially on those bitter, bitter days. Absolutely. The Braemar Golf Dome is open right now, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., seven days a week. So it's a great time for adults and kids or families to come in and work on their golf swing. Which we all need to do, those of us that get a little bit rusty over the winter time, for sure. And you can drive chip and putt there, right? Absolutely, That's absolutely. Excellent. We see a lot of senior citizens and also um, those folks that are 65 and older if they don't want to do the golfing could check with our senior center because there is a lot of activities for the older adult. Some organized events as well, wonderful. Now special events give us something to look forward to while we're working out every day and we've got some new events this year. Let's talk a little bit about that. 
Yes, we are very excited. A lot of people have New Year's resolutions to make more time for their family. And we have some family events. We have our mid-winter beach party at Edinburgh Park, which has been an annual event that's February 8th. They bring sand in for that. You know, <laughs> I think they do. There's music, lots of activities, food, an opportunity to get inside and, and feel that uh, spring-like feeling in the middle of winter. Yeah, sure. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice piece of denial for a little while. You can be on the beach and you can and be by the water and make it work good. Absolutely. This year we are pleased to talk about our first annual Sweetheart Dance, which is a dance that is for um, kids ages four to eight to bring a parent and come and have a very special event on February 15th. This, is, this sounds absolutely adorable to me. So, so you've got four to eight, ages four to eight, and they bring a date, like mom, dad, grandma, somebody else in the family. Wonderful. Absolutely. They'll have a special dinner. There'll be a kid-friendly DJ, activities, an opportunity to take pictures. So it's going to be a great event, and that's February 15th. Wonderful. Now, Tea for Two has been around for a long time, but it's a popular event. It's very popular. That's for ages four to six. We usually see a grandparent, sometimes a mom or a dad come. Um, we have obviously some tea, we have apple juice, little cookies, an arts and crafts project, but what's really the, the highlight for everybody is we have a fashion show. So all the children wear their Sunday best and we work with them a little bit and then they have a fashion show for everybody at the very end of the program. Very wonderful. cute. Wonderful. Ladies, thanks so much. This is absolutely wonderful. Something to look forward to this winter. Help us stay in shape and reconnect with our families. We really appreciate it. These are low or no cost activities and you can find out all about them on the City of Edina's website. Happy New Year to you. Happy Thank New you, Year. you too. Well, some folks like to give back, and that means volunteering your time to help others in need. Not a bad New Year's resolution. And joining us with some ideas for volunteerism is Sandy Heimerl, Volunteer of the Year for 2007. Yes. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Diana. Thanks for all of the things you've done. Um, name a couple of the activities you've done as a volunteer, just to give us a little idea. Uh, the Easter egg hunt for the city of Edina and the golf tournaments, but I'm a real big act active person in the um, chamber. So. The Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. for the city. And that's where you get some of your ideas, and we'll talk about that in a second. But first, I've got to find out, because this is on everybody's mind, I'm sure, where do you find the time to volunteer? Um, I'm very fortunate that I have a, a business that um, really generates more business by me volunteering with people. So it's kind of one of those catch-22s. So volunteering can be kind of a networking activity too, but it's important to give of your time. What do you get out of volunteering? It's just very rewarding. It's just fun to see every the whole um, event come together and the smiles on everybody's faces and and all the hard work that goes into making a lot of the events happen. And so. a sense of giving back to the community mm -hmm. since you've probably gotten something out of the community mm -hmm. at one time or another in your life. You know, and volunteering is for all ages. Would you agree? Oh, totally. You don't have to have a, a, a fancy skill set. A college degree to volunteer, it's just about rolling up your sleeves and, and pitching in, right? Yeah, you can get your kids involved. My son, that's 20 now, he's helped me volunteer throughout the years when he was younger. And, and I think a lot of seniors, they find the volunteering is a nice way to pass their time or get involved. So, so if you're interested in volunteering this year as, mm -hmm. as something to give back, um, how do you go about finding something? Something organized, something you can get involved in? Just pay attention. There's always... Um, places that are looking for volunteers. You can Google it on the inter internet or just go to the local schools or kind of chamber. in the world volunteer. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's lots of different events. I mean there's events for um, single people, single people that come together and volunteer. So there's a lot of organizations that look specifically for volunteers to make functions happen. Well, let's talk about the Edina uh, Chamber <clears throat> of Commerce as a place to find some some places to volunteer. That's That's how you went about this, right? Yeah. And, and then they have uh, organized events so they can hook you up with the schools. Right. Uh, but then there's some, some areas here in the community that really couldn't go on without the support of volunteers. Right. Like the Senior Center. Right. And yes. uh, the Art Center as well, right? That's correct. And yeah. those places are really dependent on people like you. Yeah. 
And to go back to the actual United Chamber, all their committees and board members and stuff, it's all voluntary positions. What kind of committees are out there? Um, ambassadors, uh, membership committee, government committees. So, so there's a lot of different uh, ideas out there, too. Mm -hmm. It's not always just uh, one particular thing. We see volunteers a lot for maybe the Red Cross or Habitat for Humanity mm -hmm. or Humane in the school society. system. Humane Society is mm -hmm. another one. Big so one. if you have an interest, you can match the interest with an activity that you'd like to volunteer in, too. Well, and that's something that you're interested in, yep. If you're into go government affairs and you get involved with that committee, it's, you know, you're learning and giving back. And it's, and it's a it's a critical part of life, I think, because it kind of brings you full circle a little bit. We've taken to get going, and now we can give back. Yeah, and I really feel that what goes around comes around. So it's you know, it's very rewarding to volunteer. And so, if folks want to volunteer, they could probably connect with the uh, Chamber of Commerce and, and get started there. Schools in their community, mm -hmm. some of the nonprofit organizations. Yep, totally. Well, thank you very much for all that you've done as a volunteer, and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Balancing the budget is a popular New Year's resolution. I know it's always on my list. And joining us to talk about how to manage your money for the new year, Jeff O, financial consultant from Charles Schwab. Thanks so much for joining us. On Thanks Indiana. for having me. This is a challenging topic for lots of people. It can get a little complicated, but we've done a pretty good job of organizing it in a manner that I think folks will enjoy it. Why is it always on everybody's to-do list in a new year? Well, I think as we come out of the holiday season, a lot of us have uh, bloated uh, waistlines, but also bloated uh, budgets and, and uh, credit card balances are higher than we'd like. Our savings accounts are depleted, and so we want to get that back in, in tune, so to speak, after the first of the year. Um, but it's kind of um, too uh, overwhelming, I think, for a lot of us. And so developing a plan and putting that plan on paper and kind of holding yourself accountable to the plan over the course of the year is a really important thing to do. And I think given our current economy, folks are really trying to pay attention to this. Th they are, yeah, and I think that, that Oftentimes we tend to focus on some of the negatives, but I think you have to bring it back to your own personal situation and, and really balance uh, your budget, so to speak, and, and really pay attention to the, to the numbers of what you're spending and also you know, what your investment plan is as so well. So what the key is is develop the plan, yeah. and there's some ways we can do that. I mean, I use a software program to, to help me figure out my budget, right. um, but it doesn't have to be as complicated as that. You can do an Excel spreadsheet or keep it simple, good old-fashioned pen and paper. Exactly, it, and one of the things I talk about with people is developing some type of a, of a budget and, and take a look at what you're spending over the course of a month and really just writing it down item by item. It's really easy, I think, to figure out what you pay on your rent and your mortgage and your utilities and so forth, but those variable expenses sometimes are more difficult to keep track of. And by variable expenses, you're talking about that night out for dinner? Yeah. That yeah, stopover for um, a bottle of wine or, you know, maybe you went bowling one night and you didn't have it in the budget? Yeah, or clothes shopping or going out to lunch <laughs> every day for, after work or during work. And, and I think that the $10 or the $20 it costs to do that at the time it doesn't seem like a lot of money. But when you write it down each, uh, each time you do it and you tally it up at the end of the month, it really ends up being a significant amount of money. So you're recommending we de develop a plan by taking a snapshot, take a month, take the month of January, start fresh with February, and just see what you've spent your money on. Yeah, and I think that, that perhaps doing it throughout the course of the whole year might be too overwhelming to a lot of us. I know it but, is for me. But if you do it for a month, it gives you an idea of yeah. where your money is going. And what studies show is that by doing that and seeing where your money goes, people get a lot more cautious, I guess, about where they spend it in the future, and their expenses actually go down by about 20%. That's a huge that. savings. Yeah. Now, one other thing that's interesting that, that you suggested to me, and I think is a good idea, and that is, is start, when you're looking at developing your plan, start with savings, so that rather than going right away to the money you take out of your account, but start with savings, because you want to set that aside. That's important. Savings is a key part of a good plan. Exactly. Whether it's uh, into your 401k plan at work, or whether you take off 10% of your of your income and, and move it right away to a savings account or an investment account, having it kind of as a, as a first rung priority I think will allow you then to not run out of money after you after the end of the month and not have anything left to, to put into a savings account. And for me, if I don't even see it in my paycheck, then I, you know, I, it just goes away straight to the bank, direct exactly. deposit, it's a beautiful thing, you don't just take it right it, yeah. out, I don't miss it. Right. And you know what, even if you're just saving a little bit every month, it really does add up over time, it's, $25, 50 more than that. Absolutely, and if you've got it invested in a money market that pays 4 or 5% or in a 
mutual fund that averages eight or ten percent over time, you know that does end up, end up being a lot of money over time. And and over twenty five or thirty years, you know that really is a big nest egg. That is a big deal. Twenty five or thirty years. That's interesting. That means getting started early. It does. Yeah. Right. So how do you encourage children to get involved in this process, especially when it seems so complicated? Yeah, I think as a parent, perhaps um, trying to teach your kids about you know good stewardship of money. You know, if you're giving your child a um, an allowance for a chore, maybe take part of that money and give it to them as for spending, but part of it into a savings account, or maybe buy a couple shares of McDonald's or Disney to allow them to see, you know, what what that money could turn into. And if they want to buy something in the future that is a toy or something, you know, have them pay for part of that with their their savings account. And I think it allows them to kind of uh, make difficult choices, which of course, as we get older. We have to do that every day. Yeah, it's all about choices. And there are a lot of choices in, in the financial world which can make this a really complicated topic. So it's probably a good idea to get some help uh, from a financial consultant or you know even some books. There's some great books out there that really boil this stuff down into short, sweet, and simple. Absolutely. So you can understand it. Absolutely. Now something else that's important to do, and the only reason why I even know this is, is I'm encouraged to do this by my financial consultant, and that is, is check out what you have every year. It's yeah, about balance. It is, yeah. When you have your, your investment portfolio put in place, over time that's going to get out of balance. Uh, right now, uh, international stocks have done very well over the course of the last few years, especially the, the Chinese stock market. And if you don't um, get that back into, into balance, what ends up happening is you have a lot of your money in an, in an area of the market that had already done well, and uh, you get over over uh, focused on that area, and then your portfolio could go under, uh, go through some performance problems. It's that good old-fashioned saying: "Don't put all your eggs in one basket." Exactly. So spread everything out. Exactly. I have to say this to our aging parents. I have two. You need to check in on them because things change all the time. And if you can give them a helping hand by looking over their shoulder to talk about things like wills, estate planning, what do you recommend? There? Yeah, I mean the studies show that that fifty percent of Americans don't have a will or an estate plan. And of course, the, the will allows us to determine where our assets are distributed after we pass, or perhaps for younger parents um, of children, you know, who would be the guardian of, of the children if you were to unexpectedly pass away. But with older, older um, individuals, it's important to talk about it. As time goes on, perhaps memory starts to fail a little bit, and, mm -hmm. and as, a, as an older child, you want to make sure that, that their money is still being taken care of and that your, your parents feel comfortable with what they have. So help having them, that conversation is really important. Yeah, help them make the decisions that they still can make. Yeah. Just look over the shoulder every now and then. Thanks so much. I really appreciate your time. This is excellent information and uh, I don't know, maybe we'll save a little more this year. Thanks for having me. <laughs>Well, getting organized is another popular resolution, and that means going through everything in the house and figuring out what stays and what goes. And to help us with that decision-making process is Solve Wilmot. She's the recycling coordinator for the city. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Getting organized, it's always on my list. It's about going through the closets and figuring out, hmm, do I really need this shirt? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and it is... A, a, certainly can be challenging because you may have some nostalgia to the clothing. Maybe grandma gave it to you, grandpa. Uh, something your husband thought was extra special and you just hate to disappoint him. And stuff just get stacks up. Get rid of it, yes. So the seasonal turnover, which we get to do here in Minnesota, uh, some of our closets aren't small enough to carry all of our wardrobe. So if you're going through your closet for the seasonal turnover and you find that shirt you didn't wear all summer, maybe it is time to say, Mm, somebody else could benefit from this because I'm done with it I'm, or I'm not going to wear it anymore. I, I found something else and I'm on, on to something else. Don't let it stack up. Yeah, Go ahead. Just because it might come back in style 20 years down the road. Absolutely. It's probably a good time to let it go. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're, we're talking about reusing items here too. You know, and children, as they get older, those toys that they used to play with just aren't as fun anymore. So then they, they too sit around. And that can happen within two years. Yeah. You've got from the baby toys and now you're up to toddler and then the next thing you know it's off to the video games and they're done with everything and those are so cute and yeah. what are you oh man yeah. he enjoyed it so much can I can I let it go yeah and there it's are, okay and somebody and else really really is gonna love to have and a I love that philosophy so. you know what you have and you don't need anymore still in good shape good used items you can give away donate so there are right. plenty of places in the community that will accept them uh, senior homes a Salvation Army there's some thrift stores and those th toys or items that maybe are flawed, broken, you think you could repair them, you know, it's also okay, and it's hard for me as the recycler to say, but it's okay to throw, it's okay to put it in the trash eventually. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, you want to give away good stuff that's just used. Right. And your community will help you with that. And some places will even come and pick it up. So. Right. If, if you aren't able to get it to a drop-off center for on those specific items like Goodwill, um, there are organizations that you can contact that will come to your door and set up a, a program to get that material. So that's you, clothes, so. furniture, toys, <clears throat> reusable items. Right. Then when we take on the big projects for the winter, like I think I might paint, we're going to run into some hazardous waste materials that we don't want to throw away. Very, very probable. Uh, you probably stuff saved a can of paint just for the touch-ups. Yeah, I know. You know, it's, did you really use it and now it's gotten to be kind of old and yeah, well, and you bought it, or maybe you even went through and changed the color. Gosh, that's gotten to be five years ago that I used that paint. There is a drop-off center run by Hennepin County that takes those problem waste that will include paints, paint thinners, pesticides, ammonias, uh, automotive fluids, takes all those kind of materials at no charge, no charge because you live in Hennepin County, um, and the Edina residents can benefit from that. The biggest labor is to run it to the Hennepin County drop-off site. Yeah, and this is in Bloomington, there. right? Correct. Okay. Right. Um, so it's not that far away even from Edina, the Bloomington drop-off site. And then there is one in Brooklyn Park run by Hennepin County, so if you happen to work, and that would be easier for you to do in the process, yeah. you can run it that And way. that's a good thing because it's properly disposed of, so the environment uh, doesn't suffer the consequences of some of those uh, poisonous materials that go into the ground. And oh my gosh, I just encourage Hennepin Co County residents, which are Edina residents, to make use of that because you're already paying for it. It's a service that you're paying part of your taxes through your through your solid waste fees to help facilitate yeah. that now, a, a growing waste concern is electronic waste, yeah. computers, TVs, radios, and a host of other items. But what's interesting too is, you know, with the digital phase, the HD TV stuff, folks got new TVs probably for Christmas or getting ready for the Super Bowl. Yes. So what do you do with the old one? And and the Minnesota state law just firmed up and got tougher for it just to be thrown into the trash. So now you do need to find a way to recycle that. And the drop-off center in Hennepin County, uh, in Bloomington through Hennepin County will take those materials too and again it's no charge. Uh -huh. And the reason why we got to get rid of the electronic waste properly is because there are metal products in there that are again bad for the environment. Lead solder, cadmium batteries, mercury switches, uh, lead screens. So yeah, it, it, if you're doing your part, take it, keep it, but don't store it, bring it to the Hennepin County drop-off site. And then again, if you aren't able to haul it yourself, there are agencies and organizations that will come and pick it up. And a lot of them, though, will have a little service fee because it is a, a labor and driving to the... Yeah, and it's usually a large item, too. These, you know, TV, for instance, isn't necessarily an easy thing to just pick up and haul away. So TVs, computers, radios, any electronics yes. that you might suspect... Uh, you know that you're getting rid of they need to go to, to the right spot yep good and head county will take it yeah. excellent well these are very good ideas for getting organized and dumping and cleaning and uh, ship shaping the house and everything but I'm just curious how much waste does the city of Edina generate at least in terms of recycling a year yeah I can I can really speak to the recycling collection program because I coordinate the program in Edina um, and annually we collect around 5,000 tons, 5,000 tons of recyclables. And that comes out to around 200 pounds per person for Edina residents that set out for recycling. And those materials that I'm referring to for recycling are the, the curbside collection program, the cans, the glass, the plastic bottles, the paper, the newspaper magazines, the junk mail, uh, corrugated and phone books. Those are all the materials that we have collected over the years, um, well, over a year and it's 5,000 tons. It turns oh, out to that's be. a ton yeah. <laughs> for a bunch. <laughs> Great. And that's helpful and it's good for the environment and it's good for you because and for me because our homes get a little bit organized. Thanks oh, yeah. so much for the ideas. We really appreciate it. Thanks for all your work. I know you've got more than 20 years of service in uh, the city of Edina and Thanks. we appreciate that. Thank Have you. a great new year. Well, we hope we've given you some ideas to keep those New Year's resolutions rolling throughout 2008 or just something for the to-do list later on in the year. Special thanks to all our guests who joined us with their expertise and thanks to you for watching. For now, thanks for watching In Edina. I'm Lillian McDonald, your host. Until next time.